Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my talk, How to Write PyTest Plugins. I'm Darlene Wong, and I'll introduce myself first. I'm from Silicon Valley. I was born and raised there. And one day, HBO decided to make a television show about Silicon Valley, which I thought, you know, initially, why would anyone want to make a show about this place? And, but I heard it was really good, and I ended up watching it. And you know what? It's funny because everything that they talk about is absolutely true. <laughs> so I've been working in Python for a long time, 18 years, um, at different companies around the valley some large companies, some small startups, and I'm currently working at Palo Alto Networks. Um, and I'm also one of the organizers for Pi Bay, which is one of the regional Python conferences similar to Pi Ohio, and that's a lot of fun, so you guys should all come and visit San Francisco and check it out. So thank you very much, Dane, for giving your talk about PyTest. So I, I hope you're all sold on using PyTest. And so I don't have to talk about too much of the actual writing of unit tests using PyTest. Um, so Py, as, as Dane has also mentioned earlier, PyTest plugins allow you to customize and extend the, the features of PyTest, which you already get so many great features with PyTest, but sometimes there might be things that you want to customize. And we, we already heard about the, um, the PyTest Django, so you could um, do, some, do some changes to the database. Um, there is also a PyTest ordering plugin that, um, that can allow you to configure the order that your tests are run. There's a PyTest Sugar plugin that will give you a progress bar as your, run, as your tests are running, so you can see how far along they are. One of the sample custom plugins that I'm going to talk about today um, involves customizing the test report. And then you can also extend and integrate with other features uh, such as the PyTest co Cov, which will show, which will show you the, the coverage, which Dana gave an example prior to this. One really fun one is the PyTest Slack, so that you can get a Slack notification of your, of your tests. And the best thing about that is the emoji, which gives you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <laughs> Everybody loves emojis, so, so that's a great one. And another one that I'm going to share with you today is one plugin that I've worked on recently, which is integrating PyTest with Google Cloud Storage. So how do you go about writing your PyTest plugin? Um, I kind of think of it as, a, as an evolutionary process where you start with the fixtures and hooks and then creating a, a locally installable plugin and then finally creating a distributed plugin. So, so we'll talk about some of the differences here, but uh, the locally installable plugin allows you to maybe just within your organization um, from different projects using the same plugin, but in, uh, in different code bases. And then distributed would be more like having it on, on PyPy so everybody in the world can use it. Um, but what, what I'll show you today is just the, the fixtures and hooks, the local plugins, and the locally installable plugins. So what are fixtures? Fixtures are basically functions that PyTest will run before and after the test functions. Basically getting ready for the test and cleaning up after the test, kind of like the setup and teardown when you're using the unit test package. Some examples of this are retrieving data, um, such as loading a bunch of configuration files and using those throughout the rest of your tests, or getting data from the database that you want to use throughout multiple tests. Another example would be to set up a resource that you want to reuse, such as a database connection. And here's a, a sample database connection fixture that will set up a, a connection to, to MySQL, yield that connection, and then tear it down when, when you're finished. 
So the great thing about these fixture functions is that they're reusable. But then why didn't you just use, why didn't you just call a function? Well, one special thing about fixtures is that they have scope. So you can, um, if you look above this function, this one is scoped for a module. You can also scope the fixture for a class or for the test session so that instead of calling this fixture for every single test case, you can have the database connection last for the, for the let's say, the duration of your test module or for the duration of your session so that you're not setting up a new connection for every single test, which is, you know, maybe not so bad if you only have five to 10 tests, but if you have thousands of tests, you don't want to create a new connection in between every single test. So with your fixtures set up in your local conf test file, you have then created a local plugin. Okay, so what are the hooks? Hooks are places in the PyTest code that allow you to change the way PyTest works. And the way I kind of think about it is at least mentally for me, if you imagine this blue blob as your PyTest code from, from top to bottom, and then the yellow slots are like placeholders that you can modify how PyTest works. So I think of it as um, they as like different s slots where you can where you can modify the behavior of PyTest. And if you didn't do anything, it would just if you, if you didn't write any hook functions, it would just execute as normal. But if you did have some of these implemented, then you would change the behavior of PyTest. So again, similar to the fixtures, once you've def defined a hook function in the, in the top level conf test file in your repository, you have now created a local plugin. And there's a lot of different hook functions that are available. There, I'll have a link at the end to, to um, where you can go to the documentation where you will get a long list of all the hooks that are available. Um, but today I'll just talk about four different hook functions, which are basically the four that I've, that I've used in my example code. The first one is PyTest add option, which is where you can modify the command line arguments um, that pertain to your plugin. The next one is PyTest configure, which is kind of after you've, um, after you've gotten the user's command line arguments, what do you do if, if you want to make some changes to that? Um, another really interesting one is the PyTest collection modify items. Now that's a long and confusing name, but what this is is after PyTest has gone and collected all your tests, um, you have the opportunity to make some modifications to the tests that have the list of tests that has been collected. And PyTest session finish is, is executed at the end of your test, <coughs> at the end of your test session. So I'll tell you a little bit about the first plugin that I ever wrote and why I wrote this thing. What my manager wanted is, you know, we, we want some CSV file with all the names of all the tests that we have. And, okay, so that, that was the first requirement. So I thought, okay, well, I can just do this in a, maybe I'll just give you a grep and I'll, I'll just grep for, you know, DEF and test underscore, and then I'll just give you I'll just give you the output of that. Well, how about that? And he said, well, we also want a description of all the tests. This is for like upper management. They want to see a report of what, we've, what we're testing, not necessarily how we tested it or what the results were. So they, they just want a description of all the tests that we have. I said, okay, well, well maybe I'll just do a regular expression and um, get, you all the, get you all this information. He said, well, how, can you add in the markers as well? We, we want to know, um, because we have, we have markers of the type of test, like whether it's a performance test, an integration test, 
Um, and then the priority levels, whether they're high priority or low priority, or every, everything in, is high priority in reality. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, well, th this is going to be a little bit more complicated parser, but you know, I can do this. And then about five minutes into starting on that, I thought, you know what, I, I think something is out there that, has, that can give me a lot of this information. And then I, I remembered hearing about, or I remembered reading about PyTest plugins. I hadn't actually written one at the time, but I thought, okay, maybe this is a time to look into what I can do with, with PyTest plugins. So I found that, okay, I already described to you some of these hook functions, but I, you know, I looked into the plugin writing process and, um, and basically I found that, okay, if I use this collection, PyTest collection modify items, I can tap into, um, after PyTest has already collected all the tests and identified all the tests it's going to run, but before those tests are run, um, I can get the information about the tests that would have run, generate the CSV report, and then exit the test session. So here's a little bit of how that looks. Hopefully you can read this in the back. If not, I'll give you the slides later. And it, it's not too important line by line what this does. What's, what's important is to, to just know that, that this is possible. Um, so you know, in order to specify that we want to run this test session, but just generate a CSV of the test names and descriptions and, and then exit, I created an option called test plan, which will just take the, the name of the CSV that you want to write to. And then here's, here's how it looks when you just do pytest-h. Um, you get all the different pytest options plus your custom option and some more pytest built-in options. And here's what the collection modify items looks like, which I think is much simpler than if I had written the parser to like crawl our, our repository for tests and, and figure out which ones were actual tests and you know get out the markers and get out the, the doc strings that would be used as, as descriptions. So, so what this does is that the, um, is first of all, we, we check if, if this option is even desired, which is the test plan if the user has specified that on the command line. And then we'll create a CSV file. And then the, the most interesting part is looping through the items that were collected. So for all of these items, we can get out the, the names of the tests. So um, it, it can actually be simplified here. Like what I've written here is that I, I got the, the name of the class, if there was one, and the module name and then the test name. Um, since writing this, I found out that that item actually has an item ID that gives you all that at once, so it, this can actually be simplified by a few lines. Um, but this is, this is what I did originally, and part of the reason for that is there's not a ton of documentation on what you can do, so the process for me, oops, the process for me was to just go into this PyTest collection modify items, set a breakpoint, and look at whatever was there and see what, I could, what information I could get out of this items list. And if anybody has a better suggestion, I'm, I'm all ears, but that, that was what I could find, um, short of reading all the source code for PyTest. Moving on, we get the description by getting the doc string for the, for the item, and then you can iterate through all the markers to build a comma-separated string. And then finally, write out your CSV report and exit. And this pytest.exit at the end is important, which I also found by, um, initially I put sys.exit and then you get some error and you, you still get your CSV report, which we, we did run with that for a while, but I eventually found that you could do this pytest.exit, which um, is a little cleaner. 
So this is some silly test code that I wrote just to um, manually test this out. Um, it's just some test functions with a d combination of markers and um, some tests in, in, the, in the class and some as test functions. So that when I would run this option, I could get my CSV report. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I um, that multi-line doc strings would work, and that this would work for um, tests that were defined in a, within a class, as well as as functions. And then, so here you go, manager. Here's your CSV report. You can load this into your Excel or. Uh, the reality is they wanted to import this into test rail um, and do whatever they do with test rail. So so that that's that's the the test plan plugin within the the local conf test file. Um, so now if you wanted to use this in another repository, you would either just copy that section of the conf test out, um, or you could create an installable plugin by creating a new repository, copying out the relevant sections of conf test.py into a new module, and then create a setup.py for this so that you can do a pip install. Um, so here's, the, here's what the setup.py file looks like. Um, most of it is just boilerplate stuff um, until you get to the end where you where you have your you set up your entry point into the pi test test plan module so the next plugin that I'm going to talk about is um, is a GCS plugin that also that also um, depends on an HTML plugin so the pi test HTML plugin is something that is available on PyPy and um, what, if you install that, if you supply dash dash HTML, you will get a HTML report um, as opposed to, to the, the report that's shown in your terminal. Um, so what, what we wanted to do is to take the HTML reports and upload them to the Google Cloud Storage bucket. <coughs> and this could be, if you're not using Google Cloud, you could, this could be like an AWS bucket or any other place where you want to store your reports. But we just want to keep a report history so every time the, the Jenkins runs the tests, we'll have some history of the reports without having to go into Jenkins to view them. So the process for this would be to install the HTML plugin that, that this depends on, and then implement your plugin within your local conf test, um, similar to the previous example. Only now, instead of, of uh, doing most of our work in the modify items hook, we're going to, um, at, at the session finish, when, we're, when all our tests have executed, we're going to generate the HTML report and then upload that to Google Cloud. So here's um, here's the PyTest add option hook, where we uh, we're going to collect some information about the 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 user's Google storage credentials, um, the name of the bucket that they want to upload tests to, and then the name of the file that they want to use. So the PyTest configure is where we're going to. Um, get the input from the user, and we're going to require that if they use any of these options, we want to require that they've supplied all of these options because we, we, can't, we can't proceed without having all of this information. We also want to set the file name to pass to the HTML plugin because the HTML plugin, as I mentioned before, it takes as a parameter the, the name of the HTML file. So we're going to set that. And we're also going to set this, um, the very last line here, um, the self-contained HTML. We're going to pass that to the HTML plugin as well so that it will include all the CSS 
in the HTML file so that when we view this on the Google storage, it will render properly. Um, so if you look at the very first line of this example, I've added this, um, this try first option to make sure that this, that this hook function executes before the HTML plugins PyTest configure. That way we can, that way the HTML plugin will have the, um, these options that I've set for including the CSS and for setting the file name. If you don't set the ordering, then you don't know which, what order that those, um, that those hooks are going to run in. And finally, for the session finish, um, I'll basically take the path to the local file, uh, the local HTML file, and then build up the path within the storage bucket that I want to write to. And I've split it up this way with subfolders for the year and the month and the date so that it's a little easier to navigate once you, once you get to the Google storage page. So again, these are your options that are shown when you do pytest-h with, with everything that we've set up. And if you execute, uh, again, the same sample food tests that I created earlier. Um, we'll execute all the tests and you'll get some output indicating where in Google Storage you can, you can get the output. And then the rest of the test output follows this. So here's, um, here's when, you, when you browse to the Google Storage bucket and go down, go down the subfolders and get to the report. And there's your report with all the CSS included in the, in the HTML. So the process for making this an installable plugin is very similar to the previous plugin. The only difference is that I had created a, a wrapper for the Google storage functionality. So I, I have a, a separate GCP package. Um, so when you, when you do your setup.py, you need to include um, over here the you need to include that in in the packages list, and there's a dependency because this package depends on the Google Cloud Storage package. You need to include include that as well. So, hopefully, what you've learned is not so much the details of the plugins that I've shown you, but the elegance of the plugins versus an alternative solution. Now, like what, what we could have done with this last Google storage one is we could have had all the tests run. Uh, like you could have created a separate script to execute all your Python tests, all your Py tests, and then take the output file in, in a separate script and, and upload that to Google Cloud Storage. Um, but doing this, you can keep everything within the Py test ecosystem. And then earlier with the test plan option, you saw that, okay, it was, it was much simpler to just tap into the collection modify items hook information than to write your own parser, um, which, would, which would be more error prone and um, you would need more testing for that. So um, hopefully you've also learned about the process of creating the plugins, starting with the, the fixtures and the hook functions, um, creating a local plugin, and then a local installable plugin. And, you know, we didn't have time to go over doing a distributed plugin, but the process for that would be like any other package that you would distribute to PyPy. Um, and I've also shown you a little bit about how plugins interact with each other. As you saw in the last example, how the Google storage plugin interacted with the HTML plugin and how you have to kind of watch out for, um, you know, the order that you have your, your hook functions so that they can interact with each other. As promised, here's the reference material that I used to put together this presentation. Um, of course, the PyTest documentation, 
Um, and within that is the list of all the available hook functions that you can play around with. There's the book Python Testing with, Pyth uh, with PyTest, which is a very useful resource. I highly recommend this book. And then there's the link to the PyTest HTML plugin if you want to read more about that. So thank you very much for attending. Um, I would appreciate it if you could fill out this survey for me so that I can um, continue to improve this presentation. And there's multiple ways that you can contact me. So, um, and I'll see that you get the slides available, um, make the slides available to you as well. Thank you very much.